You can support the Dungeon Masters Dojo in some very simple ways. Be patronizing, like Lou, and become a patron on Patreon and unlock exclusive patron content. Or if you're like Scott and long-term commitment is an issue, you can buy a Sasaki, shop our merch page for DMD swag, or use our drive through RPG affiliate link next time you shop drive through RPG. Or visit us on the web at the DungeonMastersDojo.com. There, you'll find links to all the above. Don't forget to email us and say hello. Thanks for listening. The Wilderin, our setting for an acorn's journey, a DMD story. This fantastic forest is a realm all of its own, with species and people unique only to its geography. Protected by what some call its ancient magic, the Wilderin does not allow evil into it, and will not allow the evil within to leave. So put your hiking boots on, because we're walking the Wilderin. It's our homebrew world, the Wilderin, this week on the Dungeon Master's Dojo. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Dungeon Master's Dojo podcast. This is a show for game masters and players alike. We hope to bring you tips and tricks to elevate your game and develop the art of dungeon mastery. I'm your host, Louis Aponte, and these are your dungeon masters, Scott Labby and Bill Robotile. Let's head to the dojo and see what they have in store for us today. Hiking boots are on, boss. We're taking a stroll. We'll probably get lost. That's why we took Bill with us. I'm not happy. You never are. Stepped out the door. What do I do? I step in a whole bunch of fairy flop. Those things will just drop it anywhere. 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 And you can't even see it. It It smells like hell. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Yeah, Mushrooms. (laughs) We are on the last day of our week-long adventure. Of course, the adventure itself is already wrapped up, and some of the cast have gone home, but we're still here, the three of us, and and Rhodey Sin. They're they're hearing this months after we've... We finish this week later. long. This will be the future us. Yes, the future us. <laughs> Let's leave a message for our future us. No, we'll do that later. We'll do that offline. <laughs> All right, the wildering. Yeah, but before we get started, uh, yeah, uh, we are not in in our normal high tech studio of Bill's basement. <laughs> we are still in this delightful house that we rent from this wonderful man, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you very much. So you may hear some background noise, namely a train. Train. There's a commuter rail a, a block and a half away that we try very hard to, you know, hit the mute button real quick before it goes by, but it doesn't always work. So if you think you hear a train in the background, you are. Yeah, and and we we do that. We hit the mute button, but then since we're old and senile, we forget where we left off, so we have to start all over again. Uh, so this is... I think number thirty. Yes, um, our, <laughs> thirty-one to be exact. So well, we're just we're just we've been doing this for a week. We're getting tired. Yeah, we're just going <laughs> to leave it on. If you hear a train, um, sorry. Just imagine it's a a dragon flying overhead, letting out a bellow. It sounds very similar to that. <laughs> so we've had some some folks express interest in our our week long getaway of of gaming, and I can understand why. It's a really really good time. We do make it sound awesome. Yeah. You don't make it sound awesome. <laughs> it just fucking is awesome. It's, Thank you, Lou. It's the highlight of my year. Mine too. Yeah, I enjoy it very much. And we we did it this year, um, shaking our fists in defiance of COVID uh, with a smaller group. A and, well-vaccinated smaller group. Yes. <laughs> and we're, uh, we're taking, taking the listeners along with us since we can't. We can invite all of you, which which we would love to do, but there's so many that the house isn't big enough. And that's not really tooting our horn because the house only sleeps like 21. And I know there's more than like, I think we have 22 listeners. So, uh, well, it depends. A holiday, sometimes it jumps up to like 24. Yeah. So After you remind your family members that you're doing this. So we figured it would be really... Well, we figured it'd be a good idea to give you a little background on some of the stuff in our homebrew world 
so that you had some context. So while you were listening to and hopefully enjoying our actual play, that um, you'd have an idea of, you know, what it's all about, the, the setting for it. So the first thing we're churning out is the Wilderin. Let's talk about its origins. Let's talk about its origins. Um, yeah, it's just, dude, yeah, we got to go all the way back to the beginning with you and me cracking a bottle of scotch in your living room. Because that's kind of its origin. Yeah, it, it is an ancient forest. used to be much larger, but there was a cataclysmic event that caused I didn't it. do it. For once. For once. <laughs> you took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah, it was, a, it was a cataclysmic event that, that occurred many, 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 many years before the actual game takes place that that shrunk its size a little bit. It sits on the eastern part of the continent, a primary continent of our world, Hymurin, and it shrunk the forest a little bit. But then there was there came a blight, and the gnomes intervened with the best of interest, and they killed the rest of the forest, turning it into a desert. Yeah, they have they tendency to do little things like that on occasion. That was a big one. <laughs> that was the big one. That was the that that was the really big one, and that's the one that kind of soured the world to a certain variety of gnome. One that. Lou has a tendency to play fairly often. But we did. It had its origins in the real world in a living room and uh, a half a bottle of scotch. Yeah, I think we started building the map of the world first. We had some ideas of what we wanted to do, but we wanted to make sure a variety of ecologies were represented. And we decided to put a rift right across the entire continent from one coast to the other. And this three, 250, 300 foot cliff, depending on where you were, bisected the entire continent. And this gave us an opportunity to do a couple of different ecological systems. And the, 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 right, the cleft, as we call it, ripped the continent in half. The wilderness was expanded most of the continent, and this basically cut it in half. And the southern portion survived, the northern portion with the blight, because that's where it started, was, um, like you said, ruined by uh, some ministrations that did not help. And but, Best of intentions. Best of intentions. But the southern part, because of the cleft, was spared the blight. Uh, but it had been reduced considerably because of other circumstances. And it kind of consolidated things. Then we, we kind of like, okay, we now we have these... We have a desert up here. We have a forest here. We have a massive city over there. We have borderlines. We have shorelines. We made a couple more continents to be disclosed later. And now we need to populate these these places. Yeah, so so who lives in the Wilderin? Well, first and foremost is uh, one of the, the elven races that we have in the world, one of the three. And they're the, the Valinasi. Those are your... In D and D terms, perhaps a wood elf, sylvan elves, yeah, very uh, a little blend of both. Uh, a little we've we've taken a little. We never had a single race. Every race that we came up with, we've kind of blended uh, a couple others, and maybe one that isn't quite as recognizable. And then with that that blending is what we came up with. And they uh, they are predominantly the protectors of the wilderness. They are a long lived people as most elves are. They they have a standing army, but there's been no war in the Wilderin for hundreds of years. The the wars tend to take place outside of the borders of the Wilderin. I think their army has become more a militia than anything else. Yeah. And then there's the Sylvanasi, the Hymurian version of uh Furbogs. There are forest giants. Yes. Uh, there are very few of those, very, very few of those remaining, and they're solitary creatures. And sometimes you can catch them peeking through the uh, through the trees or the underbrush at you, but you're never too sure. If you had a camera, it'd be a 
It'd be a, a grainy, a, a grainy photo. Blur. Yeah, yeah. This this is a a nod to uh, Scott's here uh, infatuation with uh, Yeti and Sasquatch, and they're real. A bottle of snowmen and things like again, that. again, so, real. Yes, I've never met one, but. Then there's the other race that you don't run into a whole lot of, the changelings. Or maybe you do, right? Or maybe you just you do. don't know you it. You just don't know it. Yeah, those would be the shifters in the game mechanics, but the changelings are not as rare as the, the Sylvanasi, but they're they're rare to find. And like you said, or are they? Because you may be looking at one and just not know. They have the ability to fully change into one of the woodland creatures. Yeah, bears, big cats, deer, stag, any any number of woodland creature you can imagine. Mm-hmm. Um, ours has a little difficulty with that. He does. A, a little bit of a, a stunted growth, perhaps. He was not raised by other changelings, but by uh, a blend of human and, and Balanasi. Yeah, uh, a little, a, a bit of a tramp he was. Uh, a bit, yes. And then, and then we have the fairies. Um, these, these are the, the nature fairies. We have we have two species of of fairies that live in our world. Actually, they're they're not entirely dissimilar from one another. We have the gutter fae that live in the uh, in the cities. Yes, that were built on on the remnants of the Wilderin. And then there's those fairies that live within the Wilderin. Yes. Like our friend Dash. Like our friend Dash. And, and then all manner of fae kind, right? Your all satyrs, manner of fae kind. Your centaurs, everything you would expect to find in a fantastical kind of forest. Well, having a forest that's, that's somewhat protected gives them the advantage of having somewhere where they feel safe. Right. And they don't have to hide from everyone and everything, which is why a lot of time you end up with also the descendants of refugees from other lands. Yeah, there's a bunch of them in there too. They've they've come from other places many many years ago for a variety of reasons and found their way to the Wilderin, and some may have even gotten there recently, having been because of their oddities and. The inability to mix in with some of the more the more popular races have gravitated toward this one spot where they're accepted uh, much more easily. Yeah, uh, the Wilderin is a very um, accepting place, right? Very diverse, extremely diverse, and um, it's it's welcoming to these refugees, uh, both. You know, new and of course back back in that during that period where most of the refugees left from various places in Hymerin and found their way into the Wilderin. Perhaps some of them even wanted a more simpler life away from the politics of the cities and the uh, racial tension between the various various races of the world, the mistrust of individuals different than them. They wanted to go somewhere where acceptance was was more common than not. It's also a much calmer, slower pace of life. The essentials, uh, you're going to find what you need. You can hunt, you can farm, you can do anything you want. Just don't bother your neighbors and they won't bother you. And that yeah. seems to be the, the golden rule for the wilderness. I think I might stay when we're done here. I, they could always use yet another fur bog. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty handy in the woods. If I stand still long enough, you know, nobody will notice me. (laughs) Let's take a moment to talk about our sponsor. You're a new DM who wants to jump behind the screen. Maybe you've been volunteered by your gaming group, but aren't quite ready. You've been watching people play games online or on podcasts. And you're thinking to yourself, where do they come up with all that descriptive narrative? There's no way I can do that. Well, don't worry. We've got a solution for you. What if I were to tell you? that I can put a team of professional writers alongside you at your desk while you're prepping your game. Sounds pretty good, huh? With Describe, we can do just that. These narratives vividly describe monsters, places, spells, people, you name it. It's there, and there are more than 6,000 of these easy-to-search-up 
copy, and pasteable, beautifully written narratives right at your fingertips. Confidently read these narratives aloud in your campaign and impress noob and veteran gamer alike. And the best thing about it is, the library of narratives is constantly growing, and it's affordable. Describe has graciously provided us with a discount for our listeners. Head on over to describe.com backslash DMD. That's D-S-C-R-Y-B dot com backslash DMD. Use the code DMD at checkout to try Describe for two weeks for free. Links will be in the show notes. And now, back to the show. Uh, we mentioned uh, about the, the, how the wilderness doesn't suffer evil very easily. Um, there's magic in the, in the wilderness inherent all over the place. Lots of, lots of magic. It is like that one bastion of magic that remains in a world where magic is looked upon suspiciously. It's kind of a nexus point for magic where it's a little stronger here than in other places. Now, whether that is, is drawn to a particular point or whether it's just all the wilderness in itself is something that will someday hopefully be answered. But right now it's just a very magic place. Yeah. And I guess if you really want to know a lot about the magic here and what the nexus point is, you should really listen to the actual play. Yes. A a lot of these, these things are highlighted and some answers will be evident for you. And then the wilderness is also like a crossroads. Yes. And there is that thing that is referred to as the veil. And the veil can be parted by a variety of different means that are not commonly known. Yes. And when the veil is parted, (laughs) then that is the access point to these fractured kind of fey realms from many, many generations past. Uh, layers of an onion. Exactly. There, there are layers uh, when you pass through the veil. Now, whether you're passing th- from one point to another, one time to another, one, one reality to another is not necessarily always clear. Right. You've gone from point A to point B. And point B doesn't look very much like point A. But in time, and other times it does. It looks very much like. So you're not really quite sure. You know you got there. You know you can get there and back. Hopefully. Hopefully. But it's a plan, a part, part. Uh, destination B might be a little bit of a surprise. Right. And finding the means to do that isn't always easy. No. And once once you do, getting back tends to be a little bit easier, but that depends on what fragmented part of the Fey realms that you happen to travel to. Yes, it might be a one-way door, and now you need to find a brand new door to either get back, or maybe the only way to move back is to move forward. And that... The Wilderin, because of its odd properties, because it is a, a, a place kind of out of time and in certain areas out of, out of reality or at least out of reality that is known to the greater population of the world, it's, it's out of place. It, it sticks oh, yeah. out amongst the rest of the world. It, it's, a, it's a place where uh, children are are threatened with wicked fairy creatures if they don't mind their parents. Uh, fairy creatures of the, the wilderness will come and snatch you away if you don't go to sleep or if you don't mind your, your mummy and daddy. You know, out, yeah, out in the common world, it's, it becomes that, that place of, of myth and legend and story. Unbeknownst to the common folk, it just might be better and or worse than what they're describing. Yes, there is a trade-off. It is not certainly not a perfect place. No. no. It is idyllic in some areas, but not throughout the the entirety of the wilderness. Well, you can have plenty of good, but there's always going to be a little evil to go along with it. Now the wilderness doesn't 
tolerate very easily the evil, but sometimes things just simply grow. And it's a living realm. Yes, yes. The, the, the heartbeat and the pulse being the magic. And some people have their finger on the pulse and others are oblivious to it. And a lot of times it is because it is not something they're interested in. Yeah, their life ju- is simple. Just don't care. <laughs> yeah. They'll toil in their gardens or in their fields or they'll in their shops and be perfectly happy with that. And that could be just a, a single person or two, or it could be an entire populace. But the world room breathes. Yes. It has a heartbeat. It may not have a heart, or perhaps it does. Perhaps it does. But it definitely is a living realm. And for those tied into that living realm, it could be uh, a very engaging and fulfilling experience. Yeah, and for some of the characters, I'm sure it's going to be. (laughs) You would know that better than I. (laughs) Which is evident by the smirk you just gave me. (laughs) Yeah, so enjoy the Wilderin as we unveil and unfold little bits and pieces of it. And hopefully as you listen to these, you'll recognize the parts as we step from one section of the Wilderin to the next during the Acorn's journey. And that's our homebrew world, the Wilderin. We'll see you next time in the dojo. That's going to conclude this episode. Thanks for tuning in and listening. Please subscribe to the podcast for more great content. If you'd like to hear a particular topic, you can reach us out on Facebook at the Dungeon Masters Dojo. Or you can drop us an email at the Dungeon Masters Dojo at gmail.com. Thank you and have a good day. You can support the Dungeon Masters Dojo in some very simple ways. Be patronizing, like Lou, and become a patron on Patreon and unlock exclusive patron content. Or if you're like Scott and long-term commitment is an issue, you can buy us a sake, shop our merch page for DMD swag, or use our drive through RPG affiliate link next time you shop drive through RPG. Or visit us on the web at the DungeonMastersDojo.com. There, you'll find links to all the above. Don't forget to email us and say hello. Thanks for listening.